Hope Church Lavington presents You've Got More Mail. This week, Hold On to What You Have by Pastor Joshua Azikiwe. But there was a young man in the year 1987. This young man had just come from church and he was going to play soccer. You know, like Sunday morning, you're from church, we meet as young people in the estate and you begin to change, put on boots, put on shorts, put on t-shirts as you head to the soccer ground. Now, there's something amazing that happened. Two ladies braved uh, that scenario. They came in broke into the crowd and went direct to us and began to share the gospel of Christ. Two ladies, vijana wa meja, some are changing, they didn't care. They broke in and began to share the gospel of Christ. Wakaongea, wakatuongelesha, wakatuongelesha, and they left. Moving ahead, they found an old mama, kamama kaze. Apparently, this mom, they only knew she didn't know English, didn't know understand Kiswahili, she only knew Kiluya. So these two ladies, in talking to her, realizing that they can't communicate, came back to the team of young men meeting for soccer. And they asked the team, please give us somebody who can, who, who can act as a translator. The entire team that was there looked around and pointed at Azik. Now, Azik is not a lawyer, but they said, wewe, ndi utaenda ku translate. So I was forced by my team. So I went with the ladies. I went to where the mother is and uh, the translators were there. So I stood in. So I'm waiting for them now to start speaking so that I can translate whatever I can, despite the fact that I'm not of that tribe. Realizing that they can't talk to that old mama, the ladies turned to me. And they began hammering the gospel of Christ. And they told me, do you want to get saved? I said, yes. They said, all right. See what I magoti. This is on the streets. So I knelt. When I knelt like this, I, I heard the crowd laughing. Hey, Azika na mepiga magoti, anaombewa wana. Sawa. They prayed for me. They laid hands on me. And after about two minutes or three, they said, Kijana, umeokoka. Now, we want you to do this. Because umeokoka, come with us. Let us go to Kamukunji grounds. You are going to give a testimony in a big crusade. Kasema, wow. I said no. Because I'm okay. Tutakutana, because I knew where the Kamukunji grounds was. I went home. It was about lunchtime. Nikapewa chakula siwezi zosi. Mkono ina tetemeka. My mother is asking you, are you sick? Namambia, no, my mother ni maombewa. So what about being prayed for? You normally go to church. No, ma'am. They have said that now I am saved. And I never ate the food. Instead of going to Kamukunji, nikatoroka nikaenda Strathmore College decided let me go and play basketball when I came back to my friends my friends said eh, we are giving you two weeks sinakwaga two weeks two weeks ikapita tunakupatia miezi ngapi tatu sinakwaga tatu after three months normally it's normally another one year it's now 25 years and I'm still born again Bona sifiwe so glory to God for those of you who are still holding on glory to God for those of us who, unlike me, have been saved in church in a more dignified environment. Mimi nilikuwa kwa barabara. But we are here standing because of what the Lord has done. Amen. So hold on to that truth that you have. Bona sifiwe. For those of you who are, who are saved, for those of you who are yet to get saved, yeah, your time is coming. And the time is now. Amen. After getting saved, I joined a church. And uh, of course I have lots of things that I observed But there was one particular friend of mine A young man Then I was about okay, Of course if I give the dates You'll start calculating my years But it's okay Then I was about 18 when I got saved yeah? So of course 18 plus 25 You know how old I am right now All right. And there was a young man Who lived in Madare Valley This young man Never got the opportunity To go to school 
if anything he went up to standard 3 standard 4 there siati alikuwa mjinga but you know circumstances that happen to people so he got saved started coming to the same church that i was in in isili and he began running a tailor shop alikuwa fundi wa nguo so ukiwa na kiraka he'd come make for you you know that was his job he lived in madare valley in a small kamabati house and then one side of it akabadilisha ikawa ni the workshop but amazingly this young man to this day began committing himself in the church nani fota are you with me this young man was not gifted he didn't know how to play a guitar he was not an excellent preacher but he would come to church on sunday kama kiti ni chafu atapanguza if the pastor wants to send him somewhere he will go if the team is going outside to evangelize he would close his small workshop and go with the team out to evangelize in other words this young man was committed as i observed this young man over the years the lord began to bless this young man in an amazing way as i'm talking right now almost 15 years down the line this young man is no longer the tailor we used to talk about this young man as i shared with other people the other time is now called a designer he designs clothes on top of that this young man does not just design clothes here in kenya right now he's based in washington dc brothers as i'm talking to you i communicated with him on on facebook the other day and he gave me the permission to share this this young man because of the commitment he gave to the work of god today he earns over 3 million shillings a month bwana sifiwe turn with me to revelation chapter 3 verse 7 let's begin from verse 7 and to the angel of the church in philadelphia right this thing says he who is holy he who is true he who has the key of david he who opens and no one shuts and shuts and no one opens verse 8 and now this is very key i know your works see i have set before you an open door and no one can shut it for you have a little strength have kept my word and have not denied my name philadelphia like the church of sardis were almost within the same range but the term philadelphia here simply means brotherly love this town was a very important military and commercial center but in ad 80, ad 17 there was an earthquake that rocked philadelphia and sardis now because of that so many people left the place and as a result the church in philadelphia suffered economically so this is one church that christ commends if you look at the other churches they were first rebuked or they were first appreciated and rebuked but philadelphia is one of the churches where jesus simply commended them because of their works okay and he says because of your works then i have opened a door for you now this this brought something it revolutionized my thinking and my understanding of how god opens up uh, doors for us yeah over the years and maybe it's a, it's a different paradigm i've always believed that it is i don't know how to put it but here he says i have seen your works the things you've done despite your low strength despite your the fact that you have not denied my name yeah you have kept my word because of that then god is saying i have opened a door for you bona sifiwe now he's telling the church in philadelphia this that you had low strength and it reminds me like this young man that i met that i'm talking about who is in washington dc he was a feeble guy he was not a powerful preacher he was not this gifted guitarist he was not this intellectual that can sit in a bible study and give this intellect but he was a feeble guy his strength was low and because of that the lord 
opened a door for him. Bona sifiwe. Isaiah puts it this way. Uh, in the book of Isaiah chapter is it chapter 43? Chapter 40, sorry, verse 31. It says, but those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Okay? They shall mount up with wings like eagles. Okay? They shall run and not be weary, walk and not faint. Bona si fiwe sana. In other words, what Isaiah is saying, yeah, is that with your little strength, if you have to look at it uh, in, in the context of revelations, God will make you so up like an eagle. Begin to oversee like an eagle sees its praise. He says, with your little strength, you shall run. And I want to believe there you are running your ministry, running whatever you're doing with that little feeble strength that you shall run it and not be wary. Bonus if you will. That with that little feeble strength that you have, you shall walk the walk of salvation and not faint. Amen. Some of us, we were not spiritual. I never came from a Christian home. If anything, my home was like Kevo Juices. Chaotic. But with the little strength that we had, we've been able to walk this walk this far. Bonus if you will. I'm reminded of uh, my brother, Bena, if he's around. I don't know whether he's around today. Yeah? Listening to his story from where he began when he joined this church. He was at the gate. Today, with that little strength, the Lord has lifted him up that is able to oversee the Awana ministry in the entire Republic of Kenya. Been able to sew up. Amen. He continues to say this, that other than the fact that you've allowed that little strength yeah, to operate on it, he continues to say that you have kept the word of God. Hallelujah. Yani umeweka neno la buana. I was listening to the radio on, uh, was it on Thursday? And they were talking about Kenya has now ratified a United Nations Children Sex Act. Something like that. That Kenya now is the signatory to that. And I did my research and I wanted to find out what is this act all about. Because Kenya apparently is the only country in the entire African continent that signed that act. I looked at it and it was amazingly shocking. One, it gives a child who is 10 years the right to have sex without the questioning of the parent. Now, what does that mean? That means that your standard four or your standard four, five girl or boy can come from school on Tuesday or Saturday or whichever day and he'll come holding the hand of a fellow standard five, six and they have a right to have sex in your house without you mentioning anything. In other words, they have a right to go into their room and have it. That is one. Number two, it means that if this standard three, I mean this standard four or standard five boy or girl gets pregnant, then he or she has a right to decide whether he's going to abort or no. And Kasema, hey, it's actually operating, it's, it's operational in the US, so it's new to us. And I just said, I Namulipia school fees and he has a right to give birth in my own house and I take care of them at 10 years. And I just said to myself, ah, uh-uh, this is too far. Anyone else who wishes come a mende, I'm a panya. Why? The word of God is no longer in the hearts of the people who do this. Bonus if you read the book of Joshua, chapter 1, verse 8. It says, This book of the law, Naitu Naijua shall not depart from my mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and you will have good success. In other words, success and the prosperity comes as long as you've held the word of God in your heart. Tukupa moja wapendwa. Psalms chapter chapter gani? Chapter Psalms 119 
11 says but your word i have hidden in my heart that i may not sin against you this is a challenge god is giving us are we willing to hide the word of god in our hearts amen ukitoka hapa leo after this service is over are you willing to hold that word of god in your heart or will it be stolen away by events that happen after service bona sifiwe a friend of mine an engineer he graduated from nairobi university in 19 uh, i think it was 1996 this engineer guy after graduating got a job with an indian company at industrial area and every morning he used to tell me every morning as he enters into that company the boss would ask him kijana you are still worshiping this jesus of yours are you and you'd say yes which jesus is this you're worshiping and you know the way indians talk and he'd ridicule this young guy but the guy kept on he held the word of god in his heart on top of that this young man every friday he would come home take a bible study material and begin to prepare bible study for the group that he was leading uh, on sundays and so he had commitment being a sales engineer you're a busy person you are in an environment where you are being ridiculed daily by your bosses who worship other things but on top of that you take on the challenge to develop bible study materials for your team amen he held the word of god in his heart today as i'm talking to you right now this guy is a managing director of a company here in kenya and again even with him he told me his monthly income is over 2 million shillings a month on one side a guy who never went to school gave his commitment to serving the lord with the feeble gifting that he had on this other side we have a full engineer giving himself to serving the lord with everything that he had and both of them are now prosperous people bona si fiwe i have opened a door for you the, the lord says and nobody will shut it can i make a can i deduce something from this do you want god to open a door for you then begin to serve him with the little knowledge with the little strength that you have and you'll begin to see your life getting revolutionized bona si fiwe ukiambiwa sasa wewe ndo taongoza small group take it up right now in our hospitality ministry we only have our sister saying who struggles every day we are looking for people opportunity to serve bona si fiwe in our media team we don't have people to serve this is an opportunity for you to begin to serve you don't need to be an expert but avail yourself hallelujah the word of god i have kept in my heart that i may not sin amen so maybe the opportunity is i mean i mean maybe the challenge is maybe it is no longer about praying that god may open a door but availing yourself to serve and if you do it he will begin to open a door amen and then lastly he's saying that you have not denied my name this is verse uh, i have said before you open door and no one shall shut it yes for you have a little strength yes have kept my word and have not denied my name amen you know jesus made it clear and said that if you confess me publicly even me when you come before my father i'll confess you publicly okay i've paraphrased that but around 2004 in uh, to somewhere in nakuru a group of young people in a church decided to organize for a concert and you know young people with concerts they get excited about them and so they called all the vijanas within that area and the church was filled to about 300 people now this is a true story 300 people congregated in a small church and as they sat inside and waiting for the concert to begin another a hundred or so people came and surrounded that church and as they surrounded the church the leader got into the church and told all young people that vijana from today all of you are members of mungiki if you deny this tutatoka pale nje and you know what will happen we had shockers we have pangas will slice your head 300 young people gathered in three brave 
Vijana said no. Na walitandikwa. Wakatandikwa. And they were beaten and beaten. But they said we are not denying the name of Christ. And they were left to go. Bwana sifiwe. The remaining 297 were converted to Mungiki there and there. Bwana sifiwe. Situations will come into your own life and they may not be exciting but are you willing to stand and 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 and, and, and not deny the name of Christ that by so doing then the door of Christ will open bona sifiwe it's not going to be easy my friends when you read in the scriptures and you hear the way the apostles were sliced wengine waliingizwa kwa mafuta moto ile ina boil i don't know who that was there's one who was shred into in between another one was crucified upside down but they never denied the name of Christ hallelujah mko tayari are you willing that if tomorrow if you are told to re, to deny the name of Christ at your place of work and you are given an option if you do so unabaki if you deny the name of Christ you remain as an employee if you don't you are sacked are you willing i don't know whether there are some of us who've seen this movie courageous and i was watching a certain clip where this guy had looked for a job and finally he got a job and then the company was looking for somebody that would handle their stores and logistics department and so this guy is called in by the manager and all that and is interviewed and uh, as they felt he was he was good enough the boss asks him now oh, sir there is a container coming i don't know whether it was a container or what yeah and it has 17 crates but i want you to go and put in your diary or put in your records that only 16 have come this is your boss telling you to lie and this guy said i'm sorry i can't do that and the boss said go through it go think through it because this determines whether you'll be an employee here or will we fire you if you refuse to lie that it's only 16 crates that are coming instead of 17 then we'll fire you and the guy was like i cannot sin against my god and the boss was like yeah you are the type of person we are looking for faithful available somebody who's willing to stand by the name of god bona si fiwe i don't know how many of us would stand that test amen you've been praying that god opens a door for you time has come where it is your works that will open that door your deeds jesus says i have seen your deeds time has come for your deeds at your place of work at your family in your school wherever you interact it is your deeds that will open a door for you amen bona si fiwe tuko i want to finish up ladies and gentlemen and in finishing up you are asking ourselves then verse It says from verse 9 Indeed I will make those of the synagogue of Satan who say they are Jews and are not but lie Indeed I will make them come and worship before your feet and to know that I have loved you because you have kept my command to persevere I also will keep you from the hour of trial which shall come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on earth bona si fiwe so jesus is giving you promises saying that yes if you keep my commands and are willing to persevere then for those of you who are being ridiculed because of your christianity those very people who are ridiculing you will come and worship at your feet those of us who are coming from homes or families where people are not christians those family members who are ridiculing you they will come and worship at your feet bona si fiwe and he's saying that and in fact i remember an instance where uh i i come from a very big family we're about eight of us and i'm as i said earlier i'm the only one who is born again in that family and i remember sitting in a in a meeting with our family members discussing family issues and one of my brothers said and he was telling the younger brother don't ever get saved and be like him yani mimi don't ever get saved and be like azikiwe here be a modern man be a man who can go to the bar and drink be a modern man wakati unafanya biashara na unaona mtu ameslake gonga yeye 
Siokoke kama huyu. Be a modern man. The day you get married and you feel you are tired with your wife, marry another one. Don't get saved like this one. He was telling them, be a modern man. And I'm there. Today as I'm talking, this same person who was saying be a modern man now fellowships at NPC Valley Road. Come to worship before your feet. Bona si fiwe. But if you waver around and you are being told to be modern, yeah? Ukiona mtu amesleki kwa biashara gonge. Ukiona mtu if your wife is not in place, pick another one and you waver everywhere. Then you will have fellowship in the fellowship of Satan and the devil will be excited to have you as his agent. Bona si fiwe. Practical realities that are facing us today. Amen. I, no, let me let me not go there. Bona si fiwe. He says God will keep you from the hour of temptation. Yeah? As he says in the Lord's prayer, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Yeah? Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And I I have in my few years that I've been saved, man, the temptations that I've experienced are mind-boggling. Crazy weird temptations. I remember an instance where I was as I told you earlier I used to work as a as a programmer and I was left in a in the human resource office as I was sorting out a computer and they left the files I'm there programming meaning I have access to increase because it was a cooperative society I had access to increase my shares by whatever number I wanted because I'm programming that computer yeah you're telling it to do certain things and who else can enter there and do that nobody else the files have been placed there meaning i can change my records and do all that and a voice was telling me azikiwe opportunity is here to become a millionaire gonga and another voice was telling me don't wachana nayo i'm in the middle gonga sare gonga sare and it went on like that do you know for how long for two weeks I'm still having that opportunity to change records. Put put the calls in the computer which nobody will know and, rec- and and delete all my history. Little did I know that I was being watched. Kumbe ni mutego imewekwa. And after discovering that I went to the toilet and told God, "Hallelujah." Asante. I had no clue that people had put a trap on me to see whether really I can do what I I was planning. Bona si fiwe. God will put you or will shield you during your time of temptation. Hallelujah. During your time of temptation because they will come deliver us from evil and lead us not into temptation. Jesus prayed. Amen. Now these are difficult things. Finally he says because of that then you will be made a pillar in the temple of God. Hallelujah that you are able to use your feeble strength you are able to take the word of god into your heart you are able to i mean you won't deny the name of christ then god says that i'll put you as a pillar in the temple of god you'll become somebody critical within the temple of god meaning the church of christ in our in our times hallelujah and i cannot i cannot say much much that i mean more than that other than god desires and you see when he was saying that as i told you this same church had experienced earthquakes and historically we are being told that over time the church was i mean that same area of philadelphia was going through a lot of tremors meaning that buildings were collapsing every now and then because in those days they didn't have the technology that we have today and god says i want to put you the pillar in my temple amen that it is someone god can look at to and say this one is the one holding my temple bona si fiwe are you willing to be that are you willing to be counted by christ as a person who is a pillar in the temple of christ amen uko tayari bona si fiwe i want to finish and in finishing i'm asking us one thing if jesus were to return today what report if you are born again will you provide for him Akirudi saizi is given you all those years that you've lived up to now some it's 18 years some it's 21 others is 40 others is 50 in those years that you've lived 
what report will you give Christ and say in the years that you allowed me to live in the years that you allowed me to be at Hope Church this is what I've done for you this is the report that will determine the crown that you're going to have my challenge to us this morning friends is let us seize this opportunity and begin to serve him in 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 in, in you know begin to serve him with our feebleness and with with, with whichever thing that we have that as we go before him on that day we'll have something to present before him